This tutorial will show you how to make a flowchart, which is one of the most common and most popular types of diagrams out there. Flowcharts can describe serious processes, or they can help you decide what you should watch on Netflix or what type of cookie you should make. We'll cover how to make a proper flowchart regardless of what tool you're using, but for this tutorial, I'm using Gliffy, which is an easy to use diagramming app available in Confluence, Jira, and online. You can learn more about our app through the info linked in the upper right, or you can sign up for a free trial using the link in the description of this video. In Gliffy, I'm going to go to File, New, and this will launch the editor. From here, I'm going to do Create a New Diagram and select Flowchart. This preloads the shapes you'll need to make a flowchart in this left shape panel here. For our example, let's diagram a user's steps as if they're ordering something from a website. If you have an e-commerce site, this could help you understand what your users see and experience or document what pages they're interacting with while they shop with you. So we'll start with an oval shape, which is the standard flowchart shape for the beginning and the end of your flowchart. And we'll say online shopping, which starts this process. Now, the next step in the online shopping process would be finding an item you want to buy. So I'm going to drag out a rectangle, which is a process step, and type to give it a label, add item to cart. I want to draw an arrow between these two, so I can use that using the connector tool here in the toolbar up here. When you hover and see green, it means it's linking that connector to the shape. So I will drag and drop a connector just like that. And then I can click here to edit the endpoint and make it an arrow to show that direction. However, I've treated this connector will act as a default until I make changes later. So I know I have my arrows set up for the rest of our flowchart for now. All right, so once the user has added an item to their cart, they might be ready to check out. This means we should draw a decision diamond shape. And you can see what these shapes are called up here by hovering over them. So here is our decision shape. And we will say, done shopping. All I'm doing is typing to give the shapes these titles. And I'll draw in my connector. And if the user is done shopping, then we'll ask them if they have an account to log in. That'll be another yes or no decision. So I can draw that connector line and type to label it yes. Now, if they're not done shopping, then they are going to keep browsing for more items. So I will say browse other items with this process step here. And I'll drag an arrow from my done shopping to browse other items and type to label this arrow no. I don't love where that text is placed, so I can click and drag it along the line and I'll put it right there. All right, and then I'm going to draw one more connection here to capture that loop. All right, so back to the next step in our flowchart, have an account. This is another yes or no decision. They either have an account or they don't. If they do have an account, we're going to ask them to enter their login credentials. And I'll draw an arrow again, type to label this one yes. If they don't have an account, we're going to ask them to create a new one. And I'll drag the arrow and say no. Great. All right. Let's take a moment and assume that they don't have an account yet. We're going to ask them to enter their shipping information and enter their billing information so that they can check out. I'll go ahead and draw those arrows. And then when they're ready, they will confirm their order and check out. All right, if they do have an account and they entered their login credentials, they might have some of this information on file. So let's use decision diamonds here. And let's say shipping info on file. I'll put an enter there just to make it look a little nicer. And if the answer here is yes, then they can proceed to the next step. If the answer is no, we're going to have them re-enter this information. 
Next up would be billing info on file. And they'll go here if the answer is yes. If the answer is no, they'll jump back down to here. Awesome. And then if they answer yes to this one, then they can also confirm their order and check out. So I'm going to drag this up here. We'll do one more arrow and type to label that yes. Make some adjustments. Awesome. And then once they've confirmed their order, they are done. So we'll add in this start and end oval shape and we'll say, wait impatiently. That's how I always wait for my online orders. All right, so let's take a step back and look at this flow chart. I'm going to zoom out. That is a pretty nice looking flow chart. I'm going to nudge this down a little bit though because I want to add just a little bit more information. So say you're really focused on the customer mindset here. And so you want to break this out into phases. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this rectangle tool to just draw in a rectangle. And I'll use this toolbar option up here to send it to back. You can also hit Command B and that'll bump it to the back. And I'm going to call this browsing the site. So this is what the consumer sees as browsing the site. I'm going to move the text up to the top of the box so it's out of the way. And I'm going to restyle this box a little bit too. I'm going to remove its stroke. I think that looks cleaner and give it a nice light yellow color. I should probably make that text a bit bigger as well. Great. Okay. So this is the part that we call browsing the site for the customer. Now I'm going to look at the next phase as well. And to do that, I'm going to hit option or alt and drag out a copy of this shape to work with. Same thing as the last time I'm going to hit send to back to send it to the back. And I'm going to adjust it to include this step. And let's call this one checkout because that's what the customer is experiencing at this point. And I'm going to change this color to be light orange. And then there's one last step to consider here. So again, I'm using that option key to drag out a copy and then I'll make this smaller to fit and send it to the back. And this is the order fulfillment step. And I'll make this one light pink. I think this is a pretty good looking flowchart. Gliffy is packed with more powerful features like the ability to add links to your diagrams. So be sure to give it a try when you want to make your own flowchart and check out our other video tutorials. You will be a pro in no time.